Over the past two decades, greenhouse gas emissions have continued to grow despite numerous international agreements and national mitigation policies aimed at countering global climate change. The 2015 Paris Agreement is noted as a historic turning point in climate change mitigation, setting countries on course to address this global problem. However, many challenges for its successful implementation exist, not least for developing countries as they face a triple challenge of mitigating greenhouse gas emissions while also improving living conditions for their people, especially for women and acquiring adequate financing to do both of these. This video will explain a nine-step process that you can use to develop, finance and implement climate change mitigation actions that also support the development of women. To illustrate this nine-step process, the video draws on the experiences of the Asian Development Bank project harnessing climate change mitigation initiatives to benefit women. This project brought together gender and climate change officials in Cambodia, Laos and Vietnam to provide training and integrate gender into climate change policies, projects and funding proposals. The capacity building experts involved in ADB's project will now explain the nine-step process to you. Our understanding of climate change and its impact have improved considerably in the past two decades. We now know that women in developing countries face some of the most significant challenges in adapting to climate change. When it comes to actually reducing greenhouse gas emissions or mitigating climate change, the value of women's participation is often unrecognized and they have limited access to climate funds. Therefore, women lack incentives to combat climate change, which neglects the talents and skills they could bring to climate action. The 2015 Paris Agreement highlights the importance of women's participation in climate solutions. Funding mechanisms such as the Green Climate Fund also emphasizes that gender should be considered when allocating finance for mitigation actions. By tapping into the previously underappreciated resourcefulness of women, countries can have a far better chance at mitigating climate change and addressing this across a broad range of sectors. The involvement of women in climate change solutions also generates important core benefits like gender equity, women's empowerment and social development. While this presents a great opportunity for countries seeking mitigation funds, it also poses challenges as government officials often lack the capacities to actively integrate gender into their climate change policies and actions. It's now more important than ever for national policymakers to have the knowledge and skills needed to bring women into their climate change mitigation activities. In the next sections, we will walk you through the nine-step process and provide pragmatic guidance on how you can better craft gender-responsive mitigation actions. Step one, scoping and prioritizing a mitigation action. Under international agreements, developing countries fight climate change by voluntarily and carrying out nationally appropriate mitigation actions, or what are known as NAMAs. Nationally appropriate mitigation actions are pledged by developing countries to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. And they are frequently derived from a country's own climate change strategies and plans. Now to make a NAMA more gender responsive, it is vital that gender is considered from the outset of the NAMA's design. And the first step often involves identifying synergies between existing gender and climate change policies. In order to identify these synergies, one of the key things you need to do is conduct a stakeholder analysis that points out what might be some of the relevant partners and reaches out to possible groups that could be involved in the crafting of your NAMA. Now this uh, stakeholder analysis 
may involve identifying uh, organizations that do not know much about climate change, but possess important knowledge of women's issues and can then help you make your mitigation action more gender responsive. In the Asian Development Bank project upon which this video is based, we worked with national governments in Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. And in the case of Cambodia, it was identified early on that a key partner would be the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries. Now looking more closely at the way the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestries, and Fisheries was set up, we were also able to identify an important gender and children's working group. This group was already actively involved in integrating gender into the ministry's policies and strategies, but at that point had limited knowledge of climate change. Over the course of our project, this group then became a key partner and helped us to determine how we would scale or how we would identify what would be the key mitigation actions to move forward and potentially move into a NAMA. Now the next step involves political endorsement. And political endorsement typically involves working with high-level cross-ministerial climate change commissions. This endorsement is key for effective implementation because it enables the flow of necessary resources and tells uh, typically uh, technical staff uh, that they need to start engaging in critical implementation activities. To make this step gender responsive, it is essential that a women's line agency or a similar group is an active participant in this interministerial commission mentioned previously. And to make the case for women participation in this commission, you might be able to highlight the fact that funders and funding mechanisms are recognizing the importance of gender responsive mitigation actions. Once again, in the case of the ADB project, what we did is we recognized early on that there was already an existing committee, the Technical Working Group on Climate Change, that served to give some type of political support for mitigation actions. We then worked with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment to identify how it would be possible to include a women's organization in this technical working group. And through those discussions, what we determined was be feasible to bring in the Lao Women's Union as a partner in that group. Bringing in the Lao Women's Union signaled that this was uh, gender responsive mitigation action, had political support. Now the next step involves the design and the formulation of the NAMA. And it has actually many sort of smaller sub-steps involved. Um, these include actively engaging gender stakeholders in data collection and review, drawing on the expertise of gender, gender specialists, both from within the government, but also from civil society. Establishing an engagement mechanism that promotes regular exchanges between government and non-government stakeholders, and ensuring that the data that is gathered is used, can be used not only to evaluate reducing reductions in greenhouse gases, but also other key socioeconomic benefits, such as new jobs. Finally, and last but not least, is estimating your implementation costs. And what we want to stress here is we not only need to look at the costs in whole, but also the distribution of costs. Further, we also want to look at the benefits and the distribution of benefits. To do this, it will often help to have what is called gender disaggregated data, or data that's broken up both by men and women. In the case of the ADB project, in our work in Laos, the design and implementation applied uh, most readily to um, a mitigation activity that focused on improved cook stoves. In working with partners in designing this mitigation activity, it was decided early on that we could make a partnership between the Lao Disabled Women's Organization and some of the cook stove manufacturers. We then moved forward with designing a project that would actively engage uh, these women in uh, training classes that would teach them how to construct the improved cook stoves. And this allowed for the benefits of this project to be distributed, not only to typical stakeholders, but also um, some of the women who would not have these opportunities previously. In step four, institutional and operational reforms should be formally adopted to support the specific mitigation action. At this point, make sure that the political and financial approvals 
for the gender responsive institutional and operational elements are fully acknowledged in the policy documents related to the mitigation action. As a result of this ADB project, the Lao Women's Union now has the position and knowledge to remain actively involved in the decision making about the mitigation actions. This ensures that the political and financial support for climate action continues to consider the possible impacts and benefits for women. In step five, developing countries submit their nationally appropriate mitigation actions to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change with the objective of obtaining international funding and support. To make this step gender sensitive, policymakers should highlight the benefits for women beyond reducing greenhouse gases. For instance, the creation of new jobs or the development of new skills that could result from the implementation of the mitigation action. For this, you should engage with international organizations that work to strengthen the links between gender and climate change in policy and practice. Step six is focusing on securing funding. International funders, like the newly formed Green Climate Fund, provide finance to countries for implementing their mitigation actions. Since funders increasingly require mitigation actions to be gender sensitive in order to grant finance, it's vital that policymakers highlight the potential streams of benefits for women from the mitigation action in their funding proposals. So these proposals should include specific gender objectives, appropriate indicators, the synergies between climate and gender policies, and how women will participate in the mitigation action. And the indicators should capture the impacts of the action on men and women. For instance, they should report the jobs, skills, and income that comes from this action. For more specific guidance, you can download a template proposal we prepared following the structure of the concept note for the Green Climate Fund. This will help you make sure that gender is not merely an add-on, but integrated throughout the funding proposal. To facilitate this process of approval by international organizations, the Asia Development Bank project team co-chaired policymakers from Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam in developing their funding proposals. A marketplace was then set up in Hanoi, where these policymakers networked with international funders and organizations working at the crossroads of climate change and gender. The policymakers had a real-world chance to pitch their proposal, proposed mitigation actions to a variety of funders. They could obtain immediate feedback on their draft proposals and even get expression of interest right away. Step seven involves the implementation of your nationally appropriate mitigation action. In step seven, the country will need to go ahead and implement the climate mitigation action on the ground. This of course requires coordination between relevant agencies and stakeholders at the national level and also assigning of implementation tasks to the local level. To make this step gender responsive, policymakers need to ensure that women are actively participating every step along the way in terms of implementation. A key part of this involves the next step, the MRV framework. MRV stands for Measuring, Reporting, and Verifying. Now this step focuses on the design of indicators, monitoring protocols, and verification procedures need to ensure, needed to ensure that reductions in greenhouse gases as well as socioeconomic benefits for women and men actually happen as was planned. This step involves the practical application of this MRV framework to make sure that this does actually happen. In so doing, it is important to include both climate change and gender indicators, and it's also important to consider the um, regular review of the framework to deal with any unanticipated challenges that may arise. The experiences of a gender responsive NAMA in the country of Georgia that was implemented by Women in Europe for a Common Future can uh, help us understand how this actually occurs. 
In this particular case, the NAMA involved the installation of 20,000 solar water heaters and energy efficient stoves in rural households. This was done to reduce energy poverty, curb environmental degradation, and mitigate climate change. Now to make this step gender responsive, the women in Europe for a Common Future brought together several key partners, including uh, Green Movement of Georgia and Friends of the Earth. And these partners maintained a continuous dialogue with the Ministry of Environment and the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources. Now this dialogue helped to ensure there was a political approval and it also carried over to um, important actions during implementation. For instance, when the solar water training sessions were held, there was deliberate effort to bring in both men and women and a deliberate effort to appeal to men and women in using these energy efficient technologies. Now step nine involves the reporting to international donors. And this final step focuses on making sure that international community understands the impacts of the project or action. Now if coupled with the uh, nicely designed promotional efforts uh, that highlight gender impacts, it may also lead to similar gender responsive approaches being customized or tailored to other countries' contexts. In the case of Georgia, once again, there was a deliberate effort to identify how women and men responded to the project. And one of the things that occurred from this review was understanding that women could work in some of the construction projects that were being attempted through this project. Now this also brought more attention to the project, made the beneficiaries more prominent, and also um, was important to making sure that this was a gender responsive, nationally appropriate mitigation action. This video has offered an overview of the nine-step process policymakers and other gender stakeholders can follow to develop gender-responsive climate change mitigation policies. The steps are intended to be flexible and can be tailored to particular national and local circumstances as the user sees fit. It is our hope that the guidance offered here will help bring gender and climate change mitigation closer together and also ensure that the social and environmental dimensions of sustainable development reinforce each other. To ensure that humanity can live within the planetary limits, it is first essential that we empower women so that we can directly contribute to creating a more stable climate and sustainable future.